Here is another demonstration of three-phase power generated at a very low voltage in a very safe way suitable for student experimentation. And the way we're generating our three-phase power is we're using a motor generator set. <clears throat> now the motor and generator in this case are both electric motors designed for remote controlled vehicles. This is a traditional brush style DC motor that has a permanent magnet uh, field. It has a wound armature with commutators and brushes. So you simply power up with DC and it begins to spin. Negative on black, positive on red. It spins a shaft, which in this case has a flange coupling on it, which goes to another shaft on the flange coupling on this blue colored motor. This blue colored motor is a very different design. It is a brushless, sensorless motor, which means it's actually an AC motor. The rotor has a permanent magnet in it, and the stator windings are in a three-phase configuration. I do not know if these windings are delta or y, because I do not have a data sheet for this motor, but it really doesn't matter. It outputs three-phase, and you can see the three output wires here. So these two motors happen to have the same outside case diameter. It turns out that the DC motor is a 550 can size, and the brushless sensorless AC motor is a 3650 can size, happens to be the same outside diameter, and those diameters fit very well into the recess of a 35 millimeter DIN rail. What that means is when you set the two motors together like this, shaft to shaft, their shafts line up very well. So you get essentially automatic alignment with these, and all you have to do is lash them down to the DIN rail with some zip ties, and you're set. And then you couple the two flanges together. You can see I've used some 22 gauge wire loop through the holes in the flanges to couple them. It's very crude, but it serves its purpose. And what we're going to be doing here is taking the AC three phase power that we get out of this motor, which we're actually using as a generator, we're going to step that up in voltage. And to do that, we need a bank of transformers. So here we have standard control power transformers. These happen to be 150 VA rated, but the power rating is really irrelevant. I'm not powering a load. And certainly there's no way this little generator here can generate enough power to overheat these transformers. So I'm really not worried about their power dissipation rating. I do want to know about their step-up ratio, though. Now, these are typically step-down transformers. You would typically power them with, with either 120 or 240 volts AC, stepping down to either 12 or 24 volts AC. I'm running them backwards, so we're using them as step-up transformers. Low voltage in and high voltage out. They've been configured for the 240 volt configuration on this set of windings and the 12 volt configuration over here for the maximum step up ratio. 240 to 12 is a ratio of 20 to 1. Realistically though, the ratio of this transformer, the turns ratio, is not quite 20 to 1. The reason for that is when they design power transformers like this, they design them such that they will output the rated voltage on their low voltage side under load. So if we were powering up the windings over here at 240 volts and powering up a 12 volt AC load, as that load is drawing current, that transformer should be outputting 12 volts. When you unload the transformer, that is, disconnect the load from the low voltage side, that 12 would actually rise up a bit. They've designed that into the transformer from the factory so that when it sags down due to the loading effect, you still get the, the 20 to 1 ratio that you're looking for. What that means is that the actual turns ratio in here is less than 20 to 1. Now I've wired these transformers together, not only for step up in terms of turn ratio, but also step up in terms of the delta Y configuration. So the low voltage side, which I'm using as the primary, is wired together in a delta fashion. The higher voltage side is wired together in a Y. This gives me the maximum possible boost. So going from the low voltage side to the high voltage side, the ratio is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 32 to 34 to 1. Uh, so I'm expecting a significant boost in voltage. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn on our DC power supply. That's going to energize the DC motor, start spinning the shaft. That spins the shaft of the generator, making three-phase power onto our transformers. And I'll be using an AC voltmeter to measure the voltage output and also the frequency. I'd like to try to adjust the DC power supply to get the DC motor spinning at the right speed to produce close to 60 hertz. Now, I'm not going to succeed perfectly. It's all approximate, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is, uh, with my test probes in the voltage spot, I'm going to push the frequency button, and then I'm going to take my two test leads, 
and measure on the higher voltage side, we're going to get a nice strong signal and we will see what the frequency is. And it's currently about 68 hertz. So eh, not too far off 60. Now there's no particular reason I have to go with 60 hertz in this case, but I just like to because that is the standard power line frequency here in the United States. And the goal of this system would be for students to replicate AC power uh, under conditions that are similar to what uh, the American power grid does. Now I say similar because of course we're generating much, much lower voltages for safety. But if I wanted a little bit less frequency, I could turn my DC power supply down. That would make the motor spin slower and that would decrease the frequency output by the generator. But for right now, I'm not gonna bulk at 64 hertz. That is close enough. So what I'm going to do now is press the AC voltage button on the meter. So now I can read AC volts. And then going over here to my transformer, I'm going to measure the high voltage output of the transformer. There we go, so line voltage right there. And that is reading 7.7, 7.6 volts, somewhere in that neighborhood. Then I'm gonna take my test leads of the meter, go over here and measure the lower voltage side. I can easily do on one transformer because they're wired together as a delta. And there I go up to my meter and I'm reading about a quarter of a volt. So a significant step up ratio. And this provides, with roughly seven and a half volts line voltage on the high voltage side, this provides enough voltage where students could build circuits like rectifiers, um, for example, with diodes that would have a certain forward voltage drop. There's enough voltage being produced here that you could overcome that diode voltage drop and have a working practical rectifier. That would not be possible, for example, if I tried to use silicon diodes to rectify what's directly coming out of the generator. The quarter of a volt or so coming out of the generator would not even be enough to turn on the diodes. So, some stuff up is necessary. This, however, is not something I'd consider to be a barrier to education. In fact, I'd consider it to be a bonus because if you're gonna be learning how AC power works, you better be understanding how transformers are wired together to step up and step down AC voltage in three phase. So, it's a great application of real life principles and it's done using parts that are inexpensive, very safe to work with.